of course, the incredible story that played out in front of us with Jesse Smollett last week and the evidence that was provided. The police uh, superintendent in Chicago said, hey, we, we got a lot more than even what we presented to you. But uh, what we were presented with, pretty revealing. Dr. GM Cox of Tarleton State University is joining us now, Director of Media Engagement. I, I mean, this video evidence, this surveillance footage was, was pretty remarkable. Uh, how, uh, how extensive is Chicago's network relative to maybe other large cities around the country? Good morning, Brian. I, I think what you're seeing now is an evolutionary process uh, that's been going on for, quite frankly, a long time, a couple, uh, at least a decade, decade and a half. That started with the idea of CCTV being utilized for crime prevention. You may remember uh, London, uh, Paris, even in Japan, where closed circuit television was used to solve crimes, catch terrorists, etc. And we saw it again in Boston, Massachusetts, after the Boston mass, uh, the bombing. So we're starting to see the evolution in American cities where. Governments figured out that CCTV can perform essentially great crime prevention and investigative uh, intel uh, to law enforcement. Now, we, we have the concern by some that, hey, it can be intrusive, especially as we begin to move into the era of drone usage as well. Right. Do you have any concerns about how far this is going and, and has it gone too far anywhere in your opinion so far? Oh, I absolutely have some great concerns about it. I. Uh, probably one of the few criminologists and public administrator educators who's been espousing this issue of the shrinking of private space and the enlargement of public space. And usually that enlargement's at the expense of, uh, one might say, constitutional guarantees. Uh, but, the, you know, there's been several court cases that clearly state that if you're in the public eye, you have no real expectation of privacy. They've even ruled you have no expectation of privacy in a car driving down a public street, et cetera. So what we're starting to see is this, this shrinking, and you absolutely hit it on the head when you said the evolution of drone use now by government entities uh, and, by the way, private persons. As a matter of fact, right now, a private person in most states can operate a drone with a video camera, whereas government entities have to have a permit issued by the government. I find that fascinating. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, you're right. It's going to get bigger. But I think also with this Gen Y and Gen Z, I mean, they have a more broader comfort zone for this kind of activity where baby boomers and Gen Xers, you know, we've all read George Orwell's 1984. We just don't <laughs> like it. We're speaking with Dr. G.M. Cox, Tarlington State University, talking about the the drone piece. You got me uh, thinking for a moment. Are there any examples of the like, no-fly list being enforced? Like, for example, I've signed up for it, my house, so you're not supposed to fly a drone over my house. Uh, is anything being done with any of that? Well, I think each state's trying to grapple with this very issue. Uh, some states are, uh, you know, I saw the other day, and I can't remember what news source it was, but an individual had flown his drone into a backyard of another person, not his house, not not even a friend's house. And the individual went out there and shot it out of the sky with a 12 gauge shotgun. And the guy that shot it out of the sky was prosecuted for, I think it was discharging a firearm in, in city limits, whatever. And and the damage to this individual's drone, I think we need to understand that, that crooks are almost always the first to take advantage of technology. So we're going to see peeping Tom type behavior, uh, uh, sexual predators using drones to to facilitate their their what eroticism, whatever that is. And we're going to start seeing uh, uh, there was already evidence of kamikaze drones uh, taking out legitimate drones. So you're seeing crime uh, cartels and other crime syndicates using the drone as an attack methodology. So I, I think they need to, yes, we need to get some serious uh, regulation going out there and controlling this because it is a huge invasion of privacy. Who has a right to fly a drone into your backyard? And you may be back there to swim in the pool. You've got a privacy <laughs> fence, therefore you can, Yeah, you do not get me wall. started there. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, you built the wall that creates <laughs> right. an expectation of privacy. Yeah. We'll have to leave it there today, but thank you very much.